What's going on? What's up, brother? Good, how are you? Fun to meet you. you. Congrats on uh, all your uh, success lately. Thank you, thank you. Kill it. Where are the boys at? They're all hiding? Not here yet? No way. They gave me shit for being late. Hey, you beat them. Hey, the, food you the food poisoning last week killed me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my question is, why were you at the bar later that day? This <laughs> <laughs> food poison goes away. <laughs> it takes three days. And I'm, a, and I'm a trooper, I'm a warrior, so that's why. Food poison goes away. Another day, no. another pod. No Salim? Slim's in the whip. Oh. What's up? Oh. <laughs> what up, bro? Big dog. Oh, there he is. I feel like I know this guy. Can I do it or what? You're right into it. All right, we got the man, Sugar Sean, straight oh, after the fight. Mm -hmm, congrats. Dude, thank you, brother. Congrats. Thank you. Big. Thank you. Is this... You guys want to smoke? I, I would I would love to smoke weed. I haven't smoked weed in Sling, a while. You, Not even if are you smoking? Cigarette? I'll puff out the end a little okay, bit. Okay, Let me okay. stay sharp for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Fucking been high since my fight. I feel like fucking... Flirt. So what have you been up to since the fight? Honestly, so we fucking Sunday morning flew back, went and grabbed a f good little breakfast, and then uh, went and picked up my daughter, and really just been chilling at home, not really doing anything. Last, it's been good though. last time did you go straight to Miami or did you like oh, chill for no a bit? last time we ca I came back and then I think we went um Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday dude, I don't know I, I can't do that again dude yeah where was the after party by the way you guys all went out after Zook? I know I saw that yeah, yeah Zook that was that was pretty Zook. cool it was fun that was fun it was, yeah, it was we got good pretty vibes. I was pretty trashed man. I was yeah the I vibes were just so good all fight yeah. that it was just like that was, that was right amazing over. Steve put those gloves on dude he didn't take them off punching Brad love that shit <laughs> is that Steve the chain the you got on is that Steve's chain that he threw to you yeah so Steve Steve said he went to buy this for me from uh, um, he gave me this chain that night too What's going on with all these fucking, fucking chains <laughs> flying around left and right? I mean, what the fuck is Steve yeah, on here? He I haven't that. gotten any jewelry yet. <laughs> I haven't got any. I got, I've got shit. What's the guy's time timepiece trading or whatever? You yeah, know what I'm talking about? he said that, that, Neil. that Steve went to go buy it, and that guy said no. I want to gift it to him. So so both those guys hooked me up. Yeah, that was cool. I fucking uh, Steve threw it over, and I told Tim put it on. And I'll put it on backwards too, right at, in the cage. Just like was that was that planned though? Did you guys have that planned out? Was I didn't know. Like, no, I didn't know no, Steve no. would do that at all. I had no idea. I just fucking saw him in his pink jersey and was just fucking yelling, let's go. So, I guess that was sweet that you, got, that you came. You were at the last one, too, though, right? No. No? I don't think I so. I know. No, no. That Steve was. was. Who else was? 6'9", probably. No, 6'1", no, there. It Fuck. I thought, maybe it was just Steve. Was that in Texas? No, it was in Vegas, dude. My last eight fights have been in Vegas. Oh, really? I'm only fighting in Vegas pretty much forever. Really? I don't want to fight anywhere else, dude. Why not? Vegas is, the, is just... Where I don't know. I feel like if I fight anywhere else, it's just not gonna be this sweet. Yeah. You, get that, you get that oh. option though. Dana gives you that option, or how does it work? I feel like I'm in a good position to where I can just say I want to fight in Vegas. Like that's where I want to fight. Not Dubai, no dude. Way, like... Fuck that. You know the time difference. That shit's crazy. When I'm yeah, in Vegas, I'm dialed in. My sleep. It's like right now. It's an hour different, but dude, when I'm in Vegas, I'm just dialed in. It'd be weird fighting somewhere else. The Dubai is a mission. Yeah, it the is. Flight, I guess it's, I guess it's very quick. You just go to Vegas and oh, get yeah. it over with. Yeah, forty minute flight. Yeah, I'm there, comfortable. Um, not yeah, seven, not seventeen hours nonstop. Having fuck to take like seven Xanaxes to fucking fall asleep. <laughs> oh, you wake up, seriously, you still have twelve hours left to fucking fly there. Yeah, that, yeah. that doesn't sound. That's fun. when I discovered Xanax, man. That was the first time you ever took a out a, like a Xanax. light. Oh shit, Drake I've never done Xanax. <laughs> It's good for sleeping. I don't know if I'd is ever it, take though? it for other any other reason than that. No, what, if you t the only time you should be able to, I mean, it's like that, like a seventeen-hour flight just to knocks you Dhabi, out or what? It knocks you out. Yeah. You can probably take it then. Otherwise, I think some people have some real problems with it. Yeah, it's probably something you don't want to like jump onto. No, get hooked on Xanax. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm more of an, I was always more of an upper guy. The Xanax made you leave. <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> made you leave from <laughs> Dubai. You flew and then no, you came. No, 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 no. I left. <laughs> You're never gonna be able to escape. I'm, that. I'm never gonna be able to. I'm not gonna explain it anymore. Oh yeah, I kind of heard about that a little so, bit. So Dana said he's gonna start paying you now. Is it confirmed? Um, I I still got. I try not to talk too much about it because a couple fights ago I, I had brought it up and then I got in this little scuffle with the the UFC and it's just best not to bring up fighter pay or fights on your contract. In a, I mean, because and no matter what I say, they'll be able to they'll someone will clip this and make it say a headline that's not true and the UFC won't watch the video. They'll just watch the headline mm -hmm. and then it's bad news. But I'm happy with the UFC. I've got some more fights on my contract. I'm going to fight my contract out and then I'm gonna we're going to renegotiate with the UFC. And uh, yeah, you, Dana, have you, have you ever heard Dana say we're going to pay this guy? No. Ever? That's, Besides Connor? He said that about Connor, He just Connor, said that in the post-fight press said conference, right? He doesn't say that about much fighters. Yeah. But 
I, he said that from my performances. You know, he, he didn't say it because I was on Twitter talking shit. He didn't say it because I was in, on podcasts talking about it. And I had before. And uh, that never, you know. So I, I've just been going out there and performing. I three KOs this year. Three fight of the nights or bonuses. Damn. Um, I, I made a post today. said fighter of the year. And then me and Daniel were looking up like Kamaru Usman's fought. Like Gilbert Burns. Um, Masvidal. Colby Covington. Like, so. I, I probably a little behind there. Yeah, for sure. I think it's just funny. I knew posting that people were going to get pissed. Like, you're, you haven't fought anybody. But they're going to comment and, and that works for me. But yeah, Kamaru Usman's probably the fight your, of the year. Your but. fights are obviously fucking amazing. But like one thing that separates you is you, you seem to be like extremely smart with like social media and stuff like that, right? I noticed that too, yeah. Like, I mean, that's obvious. Your Instagram like, is popping. That's easy yeah, for us to notice. Good. So like, how did you, it is. what's like your strategy with like social media and stuff like that? I don't, I don't remember like when, when I started kind of like, figuring that part of it out it was definitely before i was in the ufc posting like i, I realized when i would post a video of me smoking a joint or something like people it would get a lot of attention because it was i mean even this was like four or five years ago to where it was still kind of like what do you like i had people be like what are you doing ufc before i got signed like ufc is not gonna like that you're not gonna get sponsors i would get called from like adults all the time like dude hey i don't think you should be posting that i was like these are fucking stupid but i don't know where where it kind of just clicked, but so for Instagram, it's just fun for me to think of a caption, get a sick pic or a funny video. I think the biggest thing's comedy. Like yeah. people don't want to see you just looking cool with chicks and money and like that. That can get you views, but comedy's where comedy you're works get it. a lot. Dude, funny, you guys fucking life. know it yeah, better than yeah. anyone. Comedy's gonna get you the views more than anything, and knocking people out is pretty sweet. Yeah. No, I just think that's cool how, like, I feel like that's something that, like, even, like, rappers or other fighters, like, don't understand. Some people just don't have that, and you seem right. to really Well, also, really like, that. I knew I'm not going to get into the UFC early and make a lot of money. For whatever reason, I wanted to be rich. I wanted to have a lot of money. And I knew just fighting, at least for the first, you know, I've been in the UFC for four or five years. I'm not going to be rich. I have to promote myself i have to get brand deals i have to get sponsorships how do you do that views numbers ad revenue whatever it is and i just you know it just made sense to me it was almost common sense like okay you find your avenue like i'm not the most funny motherfucker but i can post some funny shit and, and figure out some shit um yeah so most of it is it, it's pretty authentic too I, I am being myself i'm not trying too hard mm -hmm. and i feel like people people recognize that when did you kind of start any, like, has anybody ever like came up to you randomly not know who you are and tried to fuck with you to bar because that, that's what was interesting to me like i look at you and i'm like i think like yeah if i look at you right now i'm like i think i could kick the shit out of this guy yeah and that's like me not knowing what you actually do <laughs> yeah and then i'd be obviously like really wrong yeah so like um, people ever that fucking ashes all over your sweater oh yeah i know sorry not You're really chirping sean saying you can knock him out no i'm not saying <laughs> please i couldn't i know i couldn't but i'm, I'm saying fucked like up, but i can still does it ever happen no. when somebody goes up to you at a bar doesn't know who you are and tries to fuck with you and aren't you like not allowed to fight them because you're fucking like a weapon or something i mean yeah <laughs> kind of technically i i feel like dude you've seen me drunk like well you, i was pretty fucked up when i'm though. yeah when i'm drunk dude there's not a chance i'm getting in a fight like you just can't i don't know what you could do maybe something would switch if he said i don't know but when i'm drunk i'm just chilling vibing usually just being a freak but no one's really ever fucked with me and thought like i don't i don't think i've ever Oh yeah, that was not a club. When <laughs> I want to hear the apartment story. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one's good. This one's good. When I first moved down here, Tim and I got an apartment. That's we can talk about how when I came down to. Yeah. Um, but when I first moved down, Tim and I had an apartment. Uh, I was 19 years old, skinny little fucking. I was just real skinny. Has tattoos and, and shit. And this Tony lived by himself. Had like nine cats. Was fucking jacked. He was probably what 40, 40 years old. Jack bald like, and he met us and he was like found out that we're fighters and stuff and, and that we can make money fighting. I think I was still an amateur, but uh, he's like, That's, what? How, how did you even get to that point? He said he wanted to try it or... Yeah, he's, he didn't believe that I was a fighter. And was, Tim worked at this UFC gym, so they had a ring and we brought him over there. Not in like a mean... He wanted to fight me. He wanted to... Not fight. He wanted to spar. I fucking kicked him in the body and he shit all over the mat. Like dude. literally? Literally shit all over the map. Just like instant kick, like, like way it just came but out of his pants. we didn't know. Like, we kept going. We kept fighting. I stepped in it. Like, <laughs> stepped in his shit? Stepped in his shit. It was horrible. How did that just come out like that? I just fucking, I don't know what the fuck. 
You just hit him in the right. Is there like something that can trigger a shit coming out of your body? A like shit that? spot? I don't know. I'm... Yeah, and then kick wait, wait, is so not you good, actually man. step in it, and then did you go like? like no, I fuck? step in it, and we finish the round, and then and then Tim's like, "There's shit," and we thought it was by dog because we recorded the video. Like we had the video. I wish we still had it, dude. You gotta have it somewhere. Dude, it that was video probably, like that doesn't go away. It was probably seven or eight years ago. You gotta find that, bro. It was probably eight years. I was nineteen. I'm twenty-seven. Eight years ago. Um, in the video, you can see, we thought it was my dog because my little dog was there. So I ended up cleaning it up. I thought it was my dog. We watched the video back. You can see the shit come out of his shorts. This is the most <laughs> viral video maybe on the internet. I know. You you should have that. Dude, I can't Post that on it. your gram. There's not a chance we have it. I don't even know what phone we used. But that was fucking, that was the only time anyone ever kind of wanted to fight me. Didn't believe I was a fighter. Other than that, I just, I, I don't, I, I didn't really ever go out. Last year, I went out, started going out a little bit more. This year after that last fight, when I went out with Steve, was the first time I I really went out to clubs and shit. So I've never really been fucked with. How's that been partying with Steve and stuff, <sighs> dude? Yeah, Steve is that? an animal. I heard that was a bendy, dude. Yeah, because we went out there Thursday, and it's like I'm, I'm meeting Danny Six and and meeting Steve, hanging out with the boys, and I was like, all right, we're fucking full sending every single night, and we did Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We just went ten out of ten, hard as I could go. Dude, that was a come down though. That was like yeah, a fucking. Fucked, right? That was like a four or five day, mental like, anxious, depressed. Like that was a come down, because I was yeah. I was t- you know drink alcohol, little a little fun party toys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like I did some shit. And what I was, was your a tough longest span down. like partying wise? Like, oh yeah, that. how long was the bender? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, just going That's hard. That's like a short bender for Bob. That's fucking nothing. Sure. But then, <laughs> but then again, like then the next weekend. We went to fucking LA. Then the next weekend, we went to Cleveland. Like, we went out like six weekends in a row, and it was just fucking tough on the body. But I got it out of my system because right now, I just fought. I have no desire to go yeah. fucking hard. You, you think That's you're good. getting smarter now with more success you have in the UFC and making like better life decisions as far as I think so. Partying. I think my daughter's older now too. She's she's one. She's saying, Dad, it's like, well, that's changing me as a person. So that helps a lot too. Um, I think uh, just I had to experience going out. Yeah. And I'm course. still going to go out. We're still going to go to the club. Like, it's still going to happen, but not like it did. That that was like fucking, that was hardcore for me. Um, but the fight, but the, fight you, the fight you recently just had, right? Yeah. Like, prior to that, how many days are you taking off? I was, like, not- I was done 10 weeks, locked in, dialed in. So that means 10 weeks going to bed the same time every day. Dude, my sleep, I said it, there, there's a quote. Because I said it in like the pre- like the before the fight that I have the best sleep in the UFC. I've been tracking my sleep for probably three three plus years. Um, I just got my sleep dialed in. What time do you go to bed? Uh, around nine thirty ten, but then I'm I'm up around seven thirty. I, wow. I just wake up whenever I don't really have an alarm. Um, but I have the, like the sleep is the number one performance enhancing anything. Like sleep is where you, you can go work out, have a good ass workout, eat quality food. But stay up all night, fucking gaming, going out, doing whatever, and you're not gonna get a tenth of the benefits you would get from those that day of training if you don't sleep and recover. It feels so good going to bed early and waking up early when you're on that grind. It's so dope. I I have the worst sleep schedule of all time. And that it's hard for me to sleep. I that's why I'm asking, like, curious, like when you sleeping's a skill. When you wake up in the morning, your your sleep, how you sleep is gonna determine how your day is. Right. If you're drinking too much caffeine, I mean, it's yeah, that's very you true. Up. If you yeah, eat yeah, too close to bed, my sleep was so good. Like, I, like I said, I track my sleep. So when I was in fight, when I'm in fight camp, I was pushing like three hours of deep sleep a lot of the nights, which is it's a that's a lot of fucking. That's where your body's recovering and your your muscles are recovering. But it's because I was cutting out caffeine. You know, I have one cup of coffee in the morning. You have co- coffee as a half life of eight hours. So you have a you have a cup of coffee at you know one o'clock. At nine o'clock, you're still gonna have. If you have 200 milligrams of caffeine at, at one, you're still gonna have 100 milligrams of caffeine in your body at like 8 p.m. So cutting out caffeine at the right time, not overeating, your, so your body's not digesting food while you're trying to sleep. All those, all those little things, make sure, making sure you're hydrated when you go to bed. You know, blue light blockers. Watch if you're gonna watch TV later at night. Make sure you cut it out a certain time. There's so much shit that goes into sleeping that it's a legitimate skill. You can be good at sleeping. Do you ever listen to like ocean waves and like crickets chirping on the phone? I do. I usually play like uh, there's this app, Ten Percent Happier. Play. There's a lot of app. Yeah, <laughs> uh, play different. a thirty minute meditation that'll guide you to sleep. 
get you into your breath, out of your mind. Because, you know, you lay down, you close your eyes. It's just fucking, if you even do that. Some people just stare at their phone until they fall asleep. Which is, you're, you're not going to get quality sleep. You're not going to get the REM sleep, the, the deep sleep, the sleep cycles that you need to get to wake up and feel good and, and actually have a good day. You get all that blue light hitting you, right? If you're on just the phone fucking the sitting there surfing. Yeah. I, I do Harry, uh, Harry Potter puts me to sleep. Is that weird? But reading or listening? Uh, I just put or on like Harry off. Potter, like just the jacking sh- off Harry love, Potter. You love Harry Potter. I don't know what it is. Something about Harry Potter reminds me of home or something. If I Harry need to sleep, dope. I just pop it on. I don't even think I've ever watched. You it. never watched it? I don't think so. No. Well, what's it like? Like managing, like you know, fighting, and then you have a daughter as well. Like, cause you're sleeping very early. I bet you're doing a bunch of things Dude, throughout the day. Dude, my as girl well. is the best, Danny. Like, she's we. I slept in a, my in my own room the whole. Probably the last three, three and a half, four weeks of, of because yeah, Dan, Elena's one and she she breastfeeds still, so she'll wake up and want to suck on any tits and like wake me up. So they've been sleeping in the other room. So I, like she's been a fucking huge help to uh for for sleeping. Cause yeah, when it, with Elena, like she, if she wakes up at all, wakes me up in the middle of the night, it'll throw your whole sleep off. Sometimes you wake up and you can't fucking go back to sleep. You know, so it was nice having her sleep in another room. That's why when you have a daughter, it's like everything's got to go away. It's not about you anymore. Dude, it's, it's is that a, true? It's a fucking trip right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's different than when she was because I fought twice at the beginning of this year. And Elena was a lot smaller. She was she was like a baby, baby, like just tiny. And and I leave for fight week every Tuesday. Tuesday before the fight, we leave. So the first two times leaving was was hard because she's just fucking a little princess. But now, like leaving this time, like she knew I was like I leaving kind of she I mean she's won it was it was tougher leaving this time and that's another thing like I don't really want to go out like I don't really want to go to Miami and then go to LA and then go to Cleveland I don't want to be away from her it's fucking tough like she's her teeth are popping through the top like you miss I didn't see her for five days and I swear she like you could noticeably see like she's a bigger girl now so really? it was, like, that's what's really changing like a lot of shit for me is is that is her how long you, you been with your girl yeah um, we've been together since twenty seven years. You're still, you're still with the same girl. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. She's the best. She's fucking. What awesome. do, you, do you guys have an open relationship or something? Really? Yeah, I heard about that. I yeah, know. I mean, it's it's everyone's that. everyone has like a different take on what an open relationship is. I like to think of ours as like just an open minded relationship where we don't own each other. I don't own her, and she doesn't own me. We've we've you know you have to read and when you had go into something like that it's like you look for other things other people that have done similar things books podcasts there's a lot of people that have done different relations relationships than just a monogamous relationship because but when i met danny i told her i'm like i don't know why somebody would fuck the same chick for the rest of their life like i can't do that so me and danny had she knew she didn't fall in love with a fake me she knew who she was falling in love with because i was myself i talked about chicks i like was just genuinely myself and didn't uh lie to her i wasn't didn't say like i don't think about fucking chicks or i was just straight up with her since day one and uh yeah so I, i'd say our relationship is is open but it's not like people think it's not like i'm gonna leave here and go fuck a chick yeah and then what's go fuck your another definition chick. on that yeah it's just whatever whatever so it just happens happens it's whatever happens yeah happens happens obviously we take into consideration like if I go fuck this chick and then I have feelings for her, it's like, fuck, now that's going to fuck up this whole relationship. The, the the coolest thing that's probably ever happened in our relationship, like we've had some bad, like some dope threesomes. Like th- those are, the, every relationship should be okay with that. Like that's just needs to happen. But when I was in a, at an autograph signing or a, a fucking whatever meet and greet and, and wherever I was at, I was sharing the stories when people, when people come up, take a picture and share it on Instagram. There's this hot chick. And she shared it. Or no, I shared it. And Danny was here and messaged me. She said, oh, you should see if she's single. And I messed, I hit her. I didn't think so. I, I she thought, said that to you? Danny messaged me and said, you should, you should hit her up. And I hit her up and smashed that night. So like, I wasn't going to hit her up because I didn't think she, I didn't get that vibes from her when she took she the She told picture. you to smash that Danny group. messaged me and said, you should hit her up. See, That's very interesting. So that was probably like, lit. I was like, that's, that was That's sweet. Crazy. And I did it. And then I got back to Phoenix and she asked me, said, how'd it go? I was like, yeah, smash, thanks. And like she got she a little dabbed each other up. Yeah, oh yeah. Dabbed. <laughs> and she got a little emotional yeah. because she's like she, she was like, it's just you a lot of feelings come up when when you when you're going through a relationship like that. And but that's how we've grown so much together is by doing things like that, having those cr- uncomfortable conversations to where it's just hard to even talk to your partner about certain things because you don't know what emotions are going to come up. You don't want to hurt the, each other's feelings but you also have to realize you're not in control 
of each other's feelings. Wait, so do you, you tell do you tell your girl like if you ever like oh, I don't know if you ever fell in love or like had feelings for another girl that you smashed? Do you tell her that we broke up at one point for for probably a couple months because I fucked up. I was in Vegas, smashed some biscuits, and and fucking th- you couple know biscuits? Some, dude sometimes. That's the thing with me. It's hard for me to put emotion out of it. I smashed biscuits and I was like, I like her. And I fucked up, dude. Does that happen a lot to you? Biscuits. That's not true. anymore. I, since that, since that time, it has not happened anymore. I, I feel like I definitely learned from that and grew from that. But, uh, what's yeah. that phone call like? You got to pick up the phone. You it, say, hey, I just smashed a couple biscuits. It wasn't a phone me. call. It was like when I got off the plane <laughs> call. It was tough. It was very so tough. She moved that. out. She moved out and we went our separate ways for a couple months. And then, uh, so it wasn't as open then. No, it was, but it's just like I said, those emotions hard, come up. Yeah, like, that's gonna yeah, happen. Yeah, it's not yeah. just gonna be like, hey, it's being open. It's perfect. We're gonna deal with the emotions, and it's fucking a lot. It's probably it's harder than anything. Any, you know, it's harder than training camp dealing with those emotions. Like, it's, so the insecurity and the jealousy that arises in yeah, you it's real, it's real. is crazy. Has but she, on the other side of that is fucking a lot of happiness i wonder has she ever told you she smashed another guy and then you guys dabbed each other up that's a tough call. she hasn't she hasn't she hasn't smashed any biscuits before but she told me one time she because i was having i was i was hooking up with this one chick and and, and danny knew we had we'd hooked up with her together at one point and uh she she was getting a little jealous she was feeling those emotions and and she's like i want to have sex with with someone and you know him, like it was a, one of my buddies. Oh, you know shit. him. Oh, and so shit. I said, I said, who is it? And she told me, I sw- swear to God, I messaged that kid. And I said, you know what kind of relationship we're in. I'm not going to be mad at you. If it happened, if she mess, if she hits you up, you have my word. I don't know. Like that's, that was, it was that. Your boy? You're, you like you your got friend. a good, very like upfront. You always make but, things up. Yeah. Your friend is like, it. wow. But my, like, but I, he, he, he hit me back up and he's like, He's like, okay, like, he knows what kind of relationship we're in. Like, we're buddies. And he, uh, he said, yeah, I'll have to think about this. And let, I'll, we met up at a, at a tea shop, coffee shop, talked it out. And he's like, I, I just don't think I could do that. You guys went to a coffee shop, talked it out. You know what I mean? I love it's that. important communication. I love that's that. That's the thing we're lacking the most of. And we talked about it. And, I might and, take a little bit too far. She never, she never hit him up. It never went anywhere. <laughs> but at in my mind. I accepted and was okay with if she were to do that, that it's because it's something she wants to do. It has nothing to do with me. It's not because I'm ugly. It's not because I can't fuck her good. It's not any of those things. It's because it's something she, it's one of her desires that she wanted to Thank do. Thank God, right? <laughs> Thank God it's not that. Yeah, well, yeah, when you're yeah, married, no you decide to ever get married one day. We've, we've away, been or? married for like, we've oh, been nice. married for a long time. But it's, it's research. but problems, for the sorry. fact that I was, ex- I was okay if that happened. It meant a lot to myself that I'm like, okay, I can get to the point where I'm okay. I, I'm okay with whatever happens, and that was powerful. And the f- and me and her grow so much when we have conversations like that and things like this happen. Right now, it's been a lot different. We do have a little princess. Like she went through pregnancy, she's insecure, which I don't know why most girls are, even when they're fucking hot. Like she's insecure because she had a baby, all this shit. So right now, it's been different. Um, it, it, it's been not. I mean, we're still open relationship. Like, I fucking, if there's a hot ass chick, if I go somewhere to Miami with the boys and there's a hot chick, I'm smashing. If I have the opportunity, she's a ten. I'm That's fucking lit. And she's like, Danny's you gonna, get a good we're not gonna break up with that. We're not gonna. She, we're not gonna break up because I want to have. I hook up with a chick. That makes no sense. Why would we break up what we have, which is so fucking good? Because I'm horned up. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it, how, it, how it, pumped do you get when she's now. like? When she wants to do the threesome talk, I mean, you guys have that down to a T. So, like, how does that go about? Like, if if you guys want to have a threesome, I yeah, mean, dude, like chicks are hard to find. Like, especially you were in Peoria, fucking Arizona. There's not a lot of chicks up this way, and we don't really go out ever. So it is kind of hard to find. We got, we lucked out on Tinder once earlier this year. Um, Y'all went on Tinder. Yeah, I went on wow, Tinder. I love it was that, pretty. Bro. <laughs> this is a very straight up, honest dude, and I yeah, very love honest. it. Big relationship. Because everybody's kind of yeah. Hey, this is uh, yeah. like this is great. I know. It, open relationships always interesting, and it's always it's easier for me to talk about when she's here because then it's like the questions like, yeah, but what if you want to fuck a guy? Like I can't answer things like that for her, but also it's like jealousy is the biggest motherfucker in all of us guys. I know Gabe probably gets jealous if he fucking. I, I go a little nuts too. Like, yeah, I, just smash, I, get, so I go crazy thing, over. I can't. So. He does. He don't. He don't. I've been. He I don't know. Smash. When I hear, listen to pause. Gabe's fucking smashing every nah, Tuesday. He don't, sma- he don't nah, smash. It's all cap. It's all, all cap. He's smashing his mind. 
in his mind. Oh, yeah. like, he doesn't actually close. And, and he's, he's like Tim Man. Thing. He doesn't close the deal. He just yeah. gets him. Yeah, he, get, he gets like Mako away. kills and shit. But I don't believe that. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> Gabe, you need to get a couple biscuits soon, eh? Yeah, you need to smash some biscuits here soon in Peoria. <laughs> he's gonna need a he's gonna need a big biscuit. Yeah, <laughs> big biscuit. A... So you're bit you're you're big mar- you're big into marijuana too, though. I don't know if we already talked about it. But... Yeah, I mean, I think fucking weeds weeds one of the best medicines in this fucking earth. What do you use it for specifically? Um, I think. I use it specifically I for I use <laughs> get it stone, right? yeah to get stoned. Mainly, I use it at night. It really uh, it helps me wind down. It's like uh, it's like my body knows okay we're winding down for the night. Smoke. I do. I have a hot tub and cold plunge at home that I do pretty religiously. Like in camp, I hot tub cold plunge every night. Um, about three weeks out, I quit smoking because the fucking munchies, dude. The munchies will get you, and you got to diet. I got to diet, and I got to fucking... I feel like you're a big hot Cheeto guy. No, dude, I don't, don't eat like hot Cheeto. I don't eat shit like that. I eat pretty clean. I eat clean, quality, organic, and food that's, you know, whole foods for the most part. I mean, right now, I'm fucking definitely eating a little bit not as good, but I'm, I'm for the most part, I'm eating pretty clean. You smoked with Snoop? Smoked with Snoop, dude. That was the craziest, because that was the night I got into the UFC. That was the night I got signed by the UFC. You remember that? Do you, did you see the knockout where he went crazy? Yeah. One of the sweetest knockouts... Fucking just got signed to the UFC, so I'm high as fuck off just life in general. And then I'm smoking in Snoop's trailer, just higher than fuck. Like the whole night, or that whole it just seemed like I was on a movie. It was yeah, so being high such with like a trip. Celebrities dude. is like Snoop when you're high too. With, yeah, someone like, like that, you literally feel like you're in a movie. You're like, what the fuck's going on? Like, yeah, dude. And like I trippy. walked out the trailer, and there's like people like taking pictures and shit, and I was like floating dude. I feel like I was yeah. floating oh, that was a trip how long was the smoke session with Snoop um we were probably in there 15-20 minutes uh so you really could have been an hour I don't know <laughs> Tyson didn't stop did you realize that throughout yeah. our whole two hour pot we sat down with Tyson we got really really high with him and he smoked for two hours straight yeah that, I don't like, I, I couldn't I can, I'm not like that I can't do that I fucking I zonk out um yeah I mean, should we actually talk UFC or is it? No, I, I wonder what. When did that whole like Cody Garbrandt um, <laughs> start? Like, cause I, I seen you. Um, you guys were about to do a face off, right? Or yeah, you guys I was were trying to. Dude, I for me, I mean, this go, kind of goes back to how, like the social media effect and business stuff. For me, I saw it's on the press conference. I saw the whole main card was on the press conference, so, so I knew my guy hardly speaks English. He's he's, port, he's Brazilian. He speaks Portuguese. I'm not gonna have too many good back and forths with back and forths with with him. I was like, okay, Cody. Cody's my target today. Cody's my target. I'm going to steal the press conference. What am I going to do? Tim and I, we sit down. I think for some ideas. I'm like, perfect. I'll, I'll ask Dana if me and Cody can square up. That'd be epic. No, We're not even fighting each other. And we've had beef in the past. So, you know, that, that, and then, uh, um, you know, just the one-liners. Like, we, Tim and I were at the hotel thinking, like, what would be perfect to say? Then the... Tim said, "I should say he's gonna be he one fight away from the pod or the the commentary booth. So just those little lines. One fight away from the commentary. From, he's one and six in his last seven. Oh, yeah, wow. he's lost a lot. So yeah, he's, he's lost. Yeah. He, he the thing is, he's a stud, and it, it, if anyone's gonna come back, he could maybe come back. It's that would be tough. Like mentally, where do you where do you, where's his head at? He's one and six. One and six. So how's he even fight? Every time I hear of him, he's, he's won one really? fight since 2007. I just remember him fighting Dominique Cruz. Or, Looked uh, good. That uh, was 2016. Yeah, yeah. Long yeah that time was a great ago. fight. So you think Dana's going to cut him off now? Is he done? I think he still can sell a little bit. I think he's still somewhat of a star, but he might either retire. He's still young, or or you know, fight again. I don't know. I have no idea. But yeah, we I, will we me and him ever fight? I don't know. Pro- probably not. Hopefully not. The way right? his yeah. I mean, he that was at 125. That was a weight class below. Mm-hmm. And that dude he fought was 5'4". I'm 6'6", six, six, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who's your guy that about. you looked up to? But I'd say probably Connor. I didn't even really watch UFC much growing up. I thought fucking thought the sport was disgusting. Like, watching it when I was 13, 14 years old, I couldn't watch it. I couldn't see them get kicked and punched. I just... Yeah, kicks are like, man. It's brutal. Really? I mean, oh. even still, I was like fucking crazy. Now it's different. But when I was young, I couldn't watch it. So I didn't really watch it growing up. Pretty much started watching UFC when I moved here to try to get into the UFC. But uh, it, was, it was probably Connor. Connor was, I think, fighting Max Holloway. So it was before Connor blew up. And I was like, 
he was captivating. I was like wanting to watch. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? I want to watch his interviews. I want to watch his post fight conference. I want to watch who is he fighting next. I want to follow this guy. So Connor was probably the first guy that I ever was like interested in. You ever try and like steal any of his style when you? I would say steal his style. I see what works. Steal his style. No, I see no, no, what like, works. I'm curious he what styles taught, he used. He taught the whole game a lot of shit. He right? did. I mean, he, he did. Before Connor blew up, I saw myself as a, that kind of person to to get into the UFC and, and kind of take it to a next level. But it was sweet that Connor did it before me, and I can I can learn from Connor. Connor's a fucking legend. He's a genius marketer, and I can learn from him. I'm not. I wouldn't say steal from him, but uh, uh, there's definitely things that he does that people like that I can do as well. I wonder if he'll ever come back, man. I wonder. He seems like he's coming back. I think he will he'll probably come back for that Nate trilogy. I mean, he's looking jacked. Yeah, he looks he looks, he looks good beefy, right now. Beefy dude, yeah. and I don't necessarily think. You know, if he's walking around, I think he said 189, 190. He fights at 155. I don't think he plans on coming back to 155. He'll probably fight 170. 170, yeah. I saw you guys had Kamaru on. Yeah. That was cool. Kamaru's a fucking Bam. legend. Pound for pound. Are you most right comfortable now. when you're standing up striking? Dude, I've, I'm a knockout artist. I'm a knockout king. I feel like, yeah, I'm definitely uh, most comfortable when I'm standing up. But I also do a lot of grappling and a lot of jiu-jitsu, and I, I haven't even got to show any of that. And uh, fuck, and uh, the big Steve, just jokes. No, um, yeah, I mean, I we'll see where my grappling's at when someone can take me down. Who is your, who is your one loss that you had? I haven't you lost since you're 15 and one. No, error, that was one you got hurt. <laughs> oh, that yeah. was, yeah, no, yeah, that one's that one's funny. Um, yeah, I got kicked in this perennial nerve. There's the nerve right here behind oh, your behind shit. your knee, and it made my leg go completely numb. And my I fucking had li, uh, limp limp foot. So every time I'd step forward, I'd roll my ankle, and uh -huh. uh, I fucking blitzed this dude and, and threw some punches, and I fell down on my back, and he got on top, elbowed me. Ref stopped it. Um, so so yeah. you don't really count it. I see what you're saying. I, I don't feel like I lost that fight because my skills were worse than his. I think a freak accident happened. How many t thousands of leg kicks, hundreds of thousands of leg kicks have landed in the UFC, and how many times has that happened? It's probably happened three or four times. Mm -hmm. So the the, that's the I, worst way to lose. It's yeah. So rare. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. And it, it's like if I was fighting someone and that happened to them, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be like, yeah, I beat that guy. I wouldn't think that way. I want to knock someone out. I want the ref to stop <laughs> because the dude's fucking crawling around, his head's bobbling. That's a finish. That's a fucking win. Not because someone's foot goes limp. Yes, he kicked it, but it's not like his goal. I'm gonna go in there and kick his nerve. It's not. That doesn't make sense. It was literally his big toe hit some random fucking nerve back here. If me and him rematched and he did it again, I would be like, that motherfucker he knows he how to kick move. someone's nerve. That would be different. But he hasn't done it to anyone else. So it's not like it's a skill. You know what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. What's yeah. like your behind the scenes like? Like what is like Tim's role? You talk a lot about him. And like what's like your, your circle like and like the different people you got around you? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I kind of schedule my camps and stuff more so like a boxer than than like a typical MMA fighter to where it's I'm the main motherfucker. I'm what we're focused on. At like you go to a bigger gyms, it's like there's there's six, seven fighters that have fights coming up. Like all the coaches are focused on Yeah, it's kinda weird. I'm right? my own dude and, and I think that's kinda you know, you take that like, when you're a champion that happens, people like that tends to happen. I've been doing it for last for the last couple fights, I got to fuck the best team. I got Tim, who holds mitts. He's more like the MMA coach. Who, who, who? He's a black belt in jujitsu, so he understands that. He understands my striking as much as I do. I'm like pretty much because he's hold held mitts for me for so long, and uh, so he's like the MMA the overall MMA head coach. Then, um, so we hit mitts um, once or twice a week. And then, you know, he's always watching my sparring and stuff. And then Brandon Harris, who's my strength and conditioning coach, who, who's just like, honestly, he's more of a friend now than a coach. He's a fucking just a cool ass dude and, and really, really, really gives 100% of his effort into making sure that I am peaking fight night. And, and my my weight's good. We're not doing. We're not lifting too. He wants to know where my. He want, he messaged me every morning. How'd you sleep? What was your HRV? What was your sleep score? This is what you're doing today. Like he's like on top That's of amazing. everything. I yeah. talk to him every day. And then Tankino, uh, who is the other guy in my corner, won ADCC World Nogi, I think in 2019, a couple years ago, which means he was the best grappler in, in a similar weight class 
to me and he's around my size and he's my uh he's like he's tim's professor too who gave tim his black belt uh so i just have a killer team around me and then i train at the mma lab here in phoenix and uh just have so many awesome sparring partners guys that are in the ufc kyler phillips mario batista casey kenny guys on the come up abdul there's just so many people that i have that are just such good training partners that um i feel like i have one of the best teams surrounding me how about like business wise and stuff like that is that all you kind of business wise i'd i would yeah i feel like uh my buddy Emron, who who's like one of my main sponsors, Sanibel, who's been with me probably longer than any sponsor I've had. He's been my he's my right hand man. Like I he, I talk to him every single day about uh about what's going on business wise, and and there's a lot, dude. Nowadays it's it's every single day it's business all day, which is which is tricky. It's good, but it's tricky when I'm in fight camp. It, I, it fuck needs, with your head. It, it can fuck with your head. It's like okay, it's, like there's a lot. There's a lot going on that these this last fight I did really well, kind of organizing that better, um, because the last four or five were pretty crazy, and they just keep getting more crazy. But this one I felt very comfortable with organizing all the business and not doing too much, doing just enough. But um, yeah, Emron's my my right hand man. So um, who who do you want next? Who who's your perfect fight ne- next? Yeah, I said I got ranked today, which is a big deal in some people's eyes. To me, it's one of the dumbest fucking things ever. Rankings. It, it, if it if the rankings were like more, um, if there was like an actual ranking system that made sense and everyone understood, like okay, you get this, you get this, but they're just made up for the most part. Like I'm number thirteen now, which is uh, are you serious? It's just it's weird. I've who's never in your weight class. Who's the number one in your weight class right now? Peter Yan. Peter Yan? The Russian dude. You guys know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That fucking, sounds that fucking dangerous. Dude. Peter Yan? Peter Yan, the Russian dude. He's about 5'5". Five, five. He's, uh, you know, that's the end goal. I think he's, I guess he's not the champ. Aljamain Sterling's the champ right now. But they're they're going to rematch and, and, and decide who's the champ. But, yeah, no, the whole bantamweight division from 1 to 10 are really like the whole top 15 is a fucking, it's stacked. It's the best division in the UFC right now. All right, boys, we're going to interrupt the pod really, really quick. This pod is sponsored by us. Fuck all the brands that want to sponsor the pod. You're not sponsoring it. Fullsend.com. You guys know we have a membership on Fullsend.com, and every month we're doing epic-ass experience giveaways. So if you're a member on Fullsend.com, you're automatically entered. You don't got to do anything. This month, the experience is a New Year's Eve experience with me and Steve. You're going to get flown out to Miami with a friend of your choice, all expenses paid. You're actually going to stay at Steve's penthouse with us in Miami. Miami, and you're gonna have the most epic night of your fucking life. Trust me, if you you've not fucking partied till you party with us in Miami. So, boys, if you guys want to enter for this experience, you want the chance to meet me and Steve, party with me and Steve. You honestly never know if we like you and we vibe with you, you might just fucking join Nelk or fucking Steve's fucking crew. You never know, man. Honestly, anything's possible. We're announcing the winners this Friday, the 17th. So sign up to FullSend.com, become a member. We also got Full Send Grills on there. We got a bunch of shit on there. And uh, thanks, boys. Let's get back into the pod. You think you're at that level right now where you could take down the number one guy? Dude, I'm I I feel like I'm I'm 27 years old. I don't think anyone has better striking than me. I believe in my grappling and uh I have a championship mindset. So yeah, I think I could be I I I in my mind am the champ right now. And people ask me why do you think you're the champ? And it's because if all of us fought at the same time, you could only pick one person to watch. Everyone's watching me. So So realistically, how long do you think it'll take? And what needs to happen for you to be able to fight that guy? That's number one. Whatever. Um, Peter fucking probably young. win two more fights, win the next two fights, and and I could be fighting for the belt. Um, that that's realistic. I don't know how much longer. I, my this last weight cut was pretty fucking dialed in. The ones before that, I would have said I'm probably gonna move up to 145 soon because they were so fucking brutal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was walking around a, a couple pounds less this fight camp, which was just being more disciplined on my diet. Um, so the, so this weight cut wasn't as bad and, and I'll definitely be able to fight at 35 a couple more times can before t- I move up. Can you talk us through how that works? Like weight Dieting cutting and shit? Or like weight, weight cut? cutting. Like how much weight do you cut? I see how torch, like, yeah, I do it. Very, dude, through. I hired a guy named Dan Garner and he's, he have, helps me just dial it into a, you know, we're measuring out every single meal. You know, four ounces of four ounces of chicken. Like, when does that start? Though? Like, is it all camp or is yeah, it about like six weeks? Six weeks and before then, you start cutting. Yep, and then I cut carbs out about this time. It was like eight nine days out before weigh-ins. So cutting carbs, no carbs at all. Cutting carbs is the and still training. That's fucked. It's fucked. It sucks. You lose. You feel 
you just like have an energy dump. You're not rehyd. You're not your muscles aren't fueling. It, it, cutting carbs is tough, so I do that around 154 pounds ish, let's say, and then I cut carbs and in, in a fight week, so I'm, I was walking around one. What was I fight week? 149, 149 fight week. So Monday, um, and I log all this every cut fight. 14 game. pounds yeah. in like yeah. one week. Yeah, and then uh, so Tuesday, and and so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. These are. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are very important days for water logging. Just fucking drinking 6.7 liters of water, which is like almost two gallons of water, which is yeah, that helps get the weight off. Um, and then Thursday, cutting salt and cutting water. So I'm just fucking pissing. You probably all got. Day. Do you guys like shit a lot too? No, once you once you cut carbs, you're not really shitting all your food. Not like the guy in the eating, ring, right? You're just huh? yeah. Not, not like, like the, guy. the guy in the ring. Not quite. All the food you're eating is going <laughs> to your body, refueling. And how so much weight really you have to lose in the last day? So when you have to step on that scale. So Thursday night, I cut five pounds in the in the hot tub, sweating, just dying. You're laying there, fucking feel like you're dying. And then then I woke up and cut. Um, I floated one pound overnight, and then I cut two pounds. Of 1.8 pounds Friday morning. So you weigh in at nine. I woke up 6.37 and it took me about, what, 30 minutes to cut? 30, 35 minutes to cut. What do you do to cut that last little bit? Get in a hot fucking sauna? bath. Uh. Fill up that bath. Sit in there. We did 10 minutes. Sat in the sauna for um, 10, 10 minutes and then lay down and get covered with uh, towels and just sweat it out. It's such a weird experience that that's everyone crazy. should do because you feel like you're dying. You can feel your heart and it kind of hurts. It's pounding Jesus and Christ. you're just, your head yeah, kind of hurts. Has, has, like, it's that's scary. hospital. And then, how like, do you, I mean, like, and then the next day you're just fighting after all well, that. Well, then you weigh in at nine and you start rehydrating. You start, you start drinking a lot of liquids. Like you crave, you don't crave food at that point. Really? You could give a fuck less about you it. Just want to Dude, drink you water. just want water. You, you, so you hydrate really well. And then throughout the day, you just like you don't feel fucking full, dude. You could eat all day. And if you have to pull the trigger to just make weight, like last minute, just throw up. No, you can't. You probably wouldn't be able to throw up after sweating as much as you do. You have nothing. You can't pee. You can't shit. You oh, can't wow. spit. Your mouth is so dry. How much? Uh, how much do you gain on fight night? So I was I was standing on the scale with my shoes on, and uh, what was I? One fifty six. One fifty six. So I gained about twenty pounds. Ish, give oh or my take. God. In 24 hours. Yeah. 20 well, pounds. So isn't it 15 percent, right? Or no usually that's 10, usually 10%. I, I weigh that much pretty much for like that a day night. and a half by the so time you're Friday. Fighting. So I weigh it Friday at 9 a.m. Usually Friday night because you're so you eat all day, drink all day. You usually gain about I'd gain about 20 pounds back. What? Damn. Fuck? Does it kind of hurt your stomach though after you like when you're eating? Like, if you yeah, you got to be weight. careful with what you eat. You can't eat shit. Like I'm not eating fucking Cheetos and yeah. and uh, just pizza like some people do. I see fighters fucking eating waffles and pizza after Oof. weigh-ins and like not so much Crazy. anymore as like as much, but you still see fighters doing that. And that's such an important man, part of your performance. What you eat and rehydrate with is how you're going to perform the next night. Yeah. Um so yeah, dude. Saturday, w the like you wake up. I wake up, eat. Like we go work out in the morning, just like a light, get a sweat going, get some blood flowing, get some the food and everything moving. And it's like you're sitting there for fucking hours, just waiting. Cause I fight at seven, so we we get on the bus to go over from the hotel at four thirty. And it just takes all fucking day. You feel like you're sitting there forever just waiting to go fight. It's such a weird day. It's a trip. Oh, man. What made you do the hair thing, the uh, colorful hair? Um, <laughs> Just that was I, – so when I fought Eddie Wineland, that was the first time I did my hair. I did the rainbow hair. like I did like a similar hairstyle to like 6'9". It was – it was uh, I had thought about doing something like that. And then we were, I was gaming with my buddies, and they're like, you should do your hair like that. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, I should. My girl, Danny, she does hair for a living. It's her profession. She's a fucking black belt at it. She loves That's doing lit. hair. So when like I tell her let's do something crazy, she gets jacked. Like she gets excited to fucking come up with these different hairs, hairstyles and, and colors and shit. So And the fans love it, dude. Every time I fight, people are like, what other hair? Yeah, what, it is like your signature thing be? now. People fucking love it, dude. And there's so much you can do with hair. Like it matches my merch a lot of times. I'll do merch drops with it. it it's fucking, it's just marketing. Mm -hmm. How much would somebody have to pay you right now to shave your head? <laughs> shave my head? Like right now, somebody was like, hey, I'll pay Cape. you. I just to just shave your head and you can't have the rainbow thing. Well, it'll grow I back. I can see you, Walt. I like right now, yeah, he'd have sauce. Dude, Dude, he'd have sauce. How much? I went to a boot camp when I was 16. They shaved my head, and I had like a fro. 
And they fucking just I used to rock it. the fro. Fro's nice. Fro chicks love Fro's the fro, nice. dude. Uh two mil. Oh, really that high? Probably something like that. My word. Ah, maybe a mil. I don't know. It'd be tough. Yeah, but it's a part of your thing now. You're you're that's your that's your Yeah, no, the hair's thing. the hair's fucking people love the hair. So back to the business shit. What do you what what other kind of stuff do you want to achieve besides just like obviously becoming champ? Like, is there any other business ventures you're looking to get into and stuff like that? I think the the big the one that'll probably be the biggest hasn't happened yet, and that's going to be a strain, a certain strain, the sugar strain. Well, yeah, it's perfect. And it's yeah. it's it's getting into that that business is like we've tried it a couple times, but it's tough. There's a lot of a lot of things you got to figure out, like laws, federal law, like the weed game's tough. I think that's something I definitely want to get into, um, but you have to pick the right people, the right partners. To get it's into so it. weird how it's federally it's illegal, illegal here, but not we can't in the ship states. It here. And there's, there's a lot of buck, yeah, a lot of yeah, shit. It must be a pain in the ass. But yeah. I think that's gonna be that's like a so similar weird. to the whiskey, Connor's whiskey. I think that could be my fucking my hundred million dollar. Yeah, hundred you know, percent. That, that we feel, so you yeah. guys have tried to do it, but it just we've tried to, and and you know it's 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 tough. You just gotta be. You gotta, and I and I'm waiting for the right people to you come. You gotta be around. patient, wait for the right partners to come along. Exactly. And I mean, learn as you go. Yeah. And but for the most part, everything else is like, I've been I've been selling shirts, merch since I was an amateur back in Helena, Montana, where I'm from. Sell. So I'd be like, I'd sell hundred shirts, and I'd be like, holy shit. So I've been doing merch for like a long time. So now it's nice to be able to have a company that can, you know, supply and like demand or uh, supply everything and take care of all the shipping and all that stuff. So merch is like one of my favorite business things that I'm like always a part of with like, what, what's it going to look like? What, what colors are we going to use? What are we going to come out with? Um, is that like a bigger business than the actual like pay right now? Or is it like similar? similar? I'd say I it's bet, pretty right? similar. Yeah. I'd say total this year, I've probably been half and half, like half UFC. I've made half of money. UFC half, um, sponsors, business stuff. Are there yeah. restrictions around what they allow you to do with the UFC with merch sales? Um, merch? No, they no. I, I haven't ran into any issues. Um, I know they they sell their own Sh Sugar Sean O'Malley merch, but you know I always tell people to fucking buy it for my shit rather than because I think I get like such a tiny percent of their sales. Right. So, uh, but yeah, it was cool because this fight was like the first fight. I did the like, the press conference, the weigh ins, and the fight. Like looking out into the crowd, seeing a shit ton of sugar merch, and it was that was that was the first time I really had seen like, damn, that's that's pretty cool. That that was fucking sweet. How about the NFT shit? Is that you just launched yeah, that? Yeah, the NFT. That was what I was telling you, uh, Emron, my right hand man. Like he's we've been we've been diving into the NFT world and. Well, it's a fucking, it's a crazy world, man. It's like, uh, I'm still learning more about it, more about it, but really it's just creating a really, really cool community. Like we're growing our discord and it's like a cool way to talk to fans that on, on Instagram, you're going to have haters on, on Twitter. You're going to have haters on, even when I go on Twitch, like it's not just sugar fans, it's haters. Discord is really the only community we've built. Um, that's just fucking sugar fans like it's a, it feels like a, a sweet family in there so yeah the, the nfts and the discord has been going hand in hand promoting it in there and stuff but it's cool that we're going to be able to do sweet things with the nfts as far as incentive wise um you know certain nfts are going to have different different uh benefits you know you could win i was going to give my gloves away <laughs> gloves away but i had to give them to fucking steve dude <laughs> had to give them to steve but giving away giving away fight merch tickets to the fights, flying people out. I've flown so many people out, like, for my Twitch subscribers to fucking come hang out. Like, I fought one of my Twitch subs in my cage. Like, really? I didn't hurt really? him, but, yeah, yeah, it's on you. It's fucking, dude, you gotta watch the video. It's so funny. But, uh, yeah, so shit like that, I'm, I'm, I'm really gonna get excited about that because those are gonna be, like, genuine sugar fans that are, that, that are just part of, part of, the rise dude and it, yeah the nft project's been do, doing really well and it's continuing so you guys launch what how many did you launch you know we launched nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. so and i, th I think we might have done the ten thousand where it was like the one rare the one rare one but they're all there's different categories whoa now he's pulling up the oh dude uh. that we did three three minute rounds and we had tim ref and it was the funniest shit ever and i give him shit i see bob over here vaping sucking on his vape pen yeah, yeah, i always yeah. give my buddy this so this kid was a, uh, a Twitch subscriber from Canada. Flew him down, fucking smoked with him, hung out, stayed at my house, and it was just fucking hilarious, dude. This was probably three years ago. Oh wow! What are you giving right now? You giving like five percent effort during this? Uh, five's accurate. Yeah, I'd say five. just let let him feel good, like like he's for doing a little something. bit. But it's funny because I always make fun of him for vaping. I'm like, dude, you're gonna gas out. No, it won't. 
And uh, Fuck, yeah, he, right. dude, he was a minute and a half, two minutes in, he was trying to quit. And Tim's like, nope, you can't quit. So we made him do the full three, three-minute rounds. Like, this is funny. He tried to take me down and run to the cage. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, this shit's so funny. By the end, is he just dead? Oh, yeah. But not from me hurting him, from fatigue. Yeah, but yeah. then I flew this kid, the same kid out um, earlier this year, actually like two, three months ago. Before I went into fight camp with another buddy who's, whose name's Schmitty. He's six seven two. How big is he? 300 pounds? 300. 320. And he and this kid fought on, on our... <laughs> yeah, you're just toying with him. Yeah, it was funny. But uh, I had a... We had like oh, a whole... That little, was actually a real punch. That must be dope. Oh, you're giving more than like, 5% no, a little no, bit. No, 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 no. Are you missing on purpose? I was just tapping him. I wasn't hurt. I wasn't hitting him hard. You see what I do to people. I fucking wouldn't be standing there if I was hitting him hard. No, that your, do you say your cardio is good? My cardio is good? Yeah. I mean, I broke last little fight before that. I think I broke the record for the most significant punches thrown in three-round fights. So I'd yeah. say it's pretty fucking good. Have you had a five-round fight yet? No? No. Five-round fights are main events and yeah. championship fights. And I don't want a fucking five-round fight. What? They're going to give me like $20,000 extra dollars to go fight basically another fight, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I heard I'm like, I'm not going to fucking do that. But eventually wanna... you're going to have to have a five-round fight. When I'm fight, champ, yeah. Uh, I mean, right. I mean, there's there comes a point where the, you don't you can't say no to the UFC. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather not fight five rounds and, unless you want to pay me a fucking lot more money because you know how much more training is going to go in. That was like a 10-week camp for 15 minutes. I mean, that, that's a hard camp. I think though, with the the level of cardio I was in, I could have went five rounds just because when you're in there, you have you know I'm not gonna give up, I'm not gonna fall. You're gonna you're gonna fight, but five 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 is a long. That's 25 minutes of fucking fist fighting. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd like to be paid to if I'm gonna do that. Pay yeah, that's equally. very understandable. That's sure. a long time to it fucking fight, dude. Yeah. And you think about the guys who have to do it all the time. Like, yeah, like Kamaru. Like that's fucking nuts. That's just normal to them now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, it's dope to know though that you could like whoop someone's ass though. Yeah, I mean, I mean it is fucking nice knowing that you can fuck someone up. Yeah, but... it must be cool to actually like walk in a room like this. And, like, yeah, you know, you like, whoop my ass. Wow, everybody's a pussy. Yeah, you everybody. don't. It's like that's funny. I don't. You don't think like that. I mean, I'm sure there is some guys. Like, there's some fucking weird dudes that do think like that. Like, they're just like, I don't know why, but I just never really thought like that. I've always just been. I feel like I'm a normal fucking little dude. Mm -hmm. Where'd you learn to like to start on the street? Like street? <laughs> Look fighting? at him. No, I'm curious how like one learns to like. What? I'm high. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, that's. I mean, that's a good question. I feel like I learned how to fight from just being a fucking athlete and playing basketball, football, soccer, and baseball. Where I was every fucking season, I was doing something since I was three, four, five years old. I was constantly playing sports, and then when I was 16, I tried kickboxing, and I was like naturally pretty good at it probably not technically wise like I wasn't throwing a perfect one two and a fucking I wasn't doing things technically right but I was sparring guys I've been knocking like grown men out since I was 16 years old for what I just have that I, I don't hit hard it's just timing and, and speed and that equals fucking power it's like it's like the Diaz guys right they don't yeah they, a little bit but they're they're they throw like they probably throw their punches 60%, 70%. Most of mine are like 100%. Like a lot, all my shots are power shots. Like I'm fucking cracking you pretty much every shot. If I'm landing on you, I'm going to crack you hard. To whereas theirs is more output, right? but less power, which is can still be just as effective. Right. Just damaging over time. Yeah. I know you guys had Javante on. Yeah, I didn't, was, did you guys watch his fight? I didn't see his fight. I didn't see it. No, no, I we were my dude, brother away. Watched it. Yeah. I heard it was really close though yeah that i heard i heard that too that dude that dude he fought was shorter than him wow javante dude that guy hits hard though yeah for did you ever see the video his fucking hands when he was doing that did you, when he said that he would if he, he's from the hood that's how he'd wrestle that was the funniest fucking thing ever if he actually grappled with someone like he said he'd come to mma if he took one class at a fucking amateur gym would he be gassed he would be like what the fuck i would never do that it's like funny to see how delusional he is to think that he could come into a an MMA fight and and be at any successful at all against I mean a, a elite level fighter. I wonder if a boxer will ever. It's happened in the past, but I wonder recently if anyone will ever come into MMA like a the boxer. only way they would. would is if it if they have would, a wrestling. Would there be in a lot of would there be still be like a lot of money in it if they came to MMA? If they were a massive star, if Floyd came to MMA. I'm sure Dana yeah, would yeah, figure yeah, out a way it, to pay him. But it would make sense. I don't think they're not they're not trained in anything but box their whole life, so they can only use their as hands. But you guys, boxing. you're working on everything. Yeah, Gervonta so would. I don't think Gervonta is a big enough star. But Dana would be like, no, we don't fucking want him. Yeah. But for for me to box Gervonta, 
that's a massive fight someday. Like that's a massive fucking fight someday. That's a Floyd Connor fight someday. I was potentially say that. if Damn, if we're works. on the same path. If we're if we we got to both continue. Like we haven't done enough. Like he hasn't no done what Floyd's done. I haven't done what Connor's done. But if it keeps going, like I don't see my career going any different. Yeah, I'm going that. up. I could see, I can see him. You know, keep beating people too. It could be a massive boxing fight someday. How how restricted are you though? Of like, you it know, would have going to be off? with it. Out, it would have to be like a UFC deal with like Connor did. Like Connor was right. still signed with UFC. It was like Dana still got paid. Like it was like it would have to be something like that. But dude, I I huge. can box. I can fucking box. Like actually box. I have that combo I threw up against the cage. There were no kicks there. That was boxing. It was clean. Does it bother you that you were like that restricted by the UFC at all ever? That um, you can't like go off and like so it was YouTube drama or something. Somebody want to fight. <laughs> there's two million on the table. Does that bother you at all that you're that restricted by the UFC? No, just because they've given me the platform to be able to do what I've done. Mm-hmm. That like, dude, I I wouldn't be able to do be where I'm at with the UFC. I wouldn't be able to perform in front of that many people. That's what I love doing is performing. I fucking love being in that cage, knowing everybody's fucking watching me. Like, even people at home, they're not fucking surfing their phone or eating fucking pizza. I bet they're sitting there like, what the fuck's this kid going to do? So I just love performing. And the fact that I can do that with the UFC and they've given me the opportunity this many times to keep doing it, um, I- I'd say no. Probably. The UFC's sick, man. Dana's it's the like, fucking it's come, man. Really think, about the fucking far, man think about how far Think about how far it's bad. come. Talk like, shit on Dana's a fucking piece of shit. Dana's the fucking And man. it is true what he says. Like, all the other leagues are just, like, going out of business sale every time. Like, they are. They, I think they, it's like, so authentic. You know, like the UFC has to like the keep thing. Yeah. The thing about fighter too, pay right? too like, is like if you get some guy who's not going to sell tickets to the fight, probably has total of thirty fans. It's like you're not going to pay him, and he's just getting into the UFC, and you're he's making because you make ten thousand to show, ten thousand to win when you get into the UFC. Like they're a business, you have to be making them money a for lot them of to fighters pay you, do which is fine, which is fair, and understand more. That's why yeah, there's a lot so of shit think, for it. And then like. He said something about he pays more. He pays better than most boxers, which is true. Like you go on a boxing card, you might make five hundred, six hundred bucks, unless you're the main event. Yeah, you got to prove. UFC, yourself. you're gonna make at least ten and ten, and you just got to keep fucking doing sweet shit, and you will. You, Connor's been paid, Ron has been paid, John Jones was fucking paid. Apparently not enough. Like you, if you're doing the right shit, you're gonna get paid, and that's kind of where I'm at. Like I just need to keep winning. I just he's, keep needing to do that shit. Still looking for a bag yeah, from Dana or winning. what? No, I think I'm just gonna let that slide. I think Dana knows we have enough, you know, mutual respect. I was sitting next to Halle Berry at the fight too, by the way. Oh, really? Right behind Halle Berry. I saw you got a photo with her. I did. I, I tapped her on the shoulder. At that last fight? Yeah, yeah. Damn. I was, I was right, right behind Halle. And, uh, That's fucking sweet. I saw her. I was watching. I rewatched. I watched all my fights. Like it's all I've been doing is fucking watching my Ooh, fights. Did you ever like look at her and wink after like you maybe knock him out? I like, should have. I didn't see her last time. I saw Beebs at the fight though, and that was probably one of the sickest moments because he was. St- standing up when me and this kid were just in a fucking flurry and I was dotting him up and Beebs was standing there. I went and rewatched the video. That was probably the sickest part. You're from Canada, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, Americans laugh at that. Eh? Uh, it's just such a funny like eh? lingo. Like. Well, I talk, I play with my, dude, I stream every fucking day. Play Call of Duty. Throw in your headset and like one, that kid I sparred right there, he's from Canada. So I fucking, we just, I just do it to him all fucking, the whole gaming session. Is just I, I even talk like that. I'm around these guys all the time. It's, it's just like, fun, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we literally get people like saying it, like Americans and shit. Now. Dude, I say it like not even meaning to when I'm around him. Just like, it should be just normal. I feel like I'm not in the norm when I hear you guys talk like that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. fuck, I got to start talking like this. Dude, being at the club after the fight was one of the weird, because I was sober. When I got there, I was sober. Sitting at the club, just having people staring at me and just recording. I'm not doing anything. was so fucking weird. Like, just like, you for find that 20, weird? 30, yeah, we'll for like an hour, there was this kid, huh, Daniel? Just didn't stop staring at me. Just like this. I couldn't believe I was standing there. It was so fucking weird. Should have gave him a hug. Well, I ended up taking a picture with him, but he was just like, it was crazy. Has like any weird shit like that happened to you with fame or fans? Um, nothing crazy's really happened, dude. Someone like at my house the other day, in my driveway, waiting for me to come outside for me to sign shit. That really? was fucked. And That's I'm not gonna say far, no because right? I'm like, you know where I live. Like, We've had the- people jump over our fucking garage and shit. That's or the, weird. That's the weird. Door. I don't like that because I have, a, like I said, I have a family now. It's like it's not like Tim and I live together, and it's like whatever, dude. Fucking, I think I'm a family. That was trippy. Most people are cool, then there's just that one out of a hundred or a thousand. Yeah. that's like t- just has no fucking. Yeah. yeah. If they're fans, they're yeah, typically fucking cool. I don't you know think they I mean? realize it though. Mm. 
Most fans, I don't think they realize it's what tough. they're doing. I mean, imagine just like meeting someone that you really, really look yeah. up to. Like, I get where they're coming from. Yeah, you know, it's for like sure. it's just like delusion sometimes. Well, you have yeah, that many people following delusion. you, like we do. It's like there's definitely some fucking Jeffrey Dahmer serial killer out there. Oh that's god, chop us up. That's the fucking truth, dude. Golf master over here, huh? Oh yeah, just I mean, loving it. You golf? Yeah. No, dude, I've I never golfed, but I've I've wanted to, and I feel like I'm going to eventually. But AZ I also golf hear, is the best. Golf. I hear how obsessed you can get with it, and it's like kind of dangerous. I'm, I'm, I'm at a point right now where I'm I, I don't see myself stopping at all. Yeah, so that's where I'm like, I was telling Tim, like, we'll probably golf when we're older, fucking smoke a joint, cruise the caddy, like just fucking kick it. But I don't want to get obsessed with it right now. I gotta play I got Bob. You will though. You will get obsessed. You guys gonna play? Sleep, I'll play all me. day, but I'll no. fuck Sleep. No, that's the first. I heard you were better at. You have no fucking chance. Be beat Kyle. Really? Really? Liam beat yeah. me four up. But I, I played really bad, but no, he beat no me. No way. You're, yeah. So he's actually improving? He can actually play golf now? Well, if you think like, about I, golf I'm like not, he does, I'm not that good improve. of a putter. I, I got to get way better at Yeah, but your misses, sure. like when you're hitting the ball, like your miss is fucking flying all no, over the place. going or? straight wherever I want. Do you watch I mean, I, 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 getting yeah. really good. Huh? You watch it on like YouTube I watch golf all day. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I just if, love the game. If you watch shit, like I, f- I found that out too with like kickboxing or jujitsu or even fucking Call of Duty, watching the high level people do it, I it's just it. as important as fucking doing it yourself if you're trying to improve at something. Watching it on YouTube, watching it fucking golf channel, whatever. I just love it. Yeah. I love everything you're about it. You're going to improve fast that way. Did you meet Tiger? No, man. I, oh, you were drunk texting yeah. me there or something probably because you told me you put me through this whole thing. You met Tiger. <laughs> no, you're no. Like, I, I met I Tiger. I fucking all this stuff. Uh, I, I what? Like, he was drunk it was going me. to happen. It was going to happen, but we had a mean, COVID test. There's a difference between it's going to happen and then you texted me. I thought it could happen. Because, okay, look, it was an instant, like, we were going to dinner. We were going to go after to the hotel. We were, we were going to meet him, but Shambo. I went late. Okay. Because I we went late there. to the dinner, which made the dinner longer. Me, because they were like, oh, we already he ate, but like, we'll wait for that. you guys to eat. And then, like, oh. we're at the hotel at fucking 12 at night. You know, Tiger's not coming out that time. But <laughs> Yeah, he's probably out. I, mean, I was two stories below him. No, <laughs> I was like two stories. They were telling me, like, Bryson and them were like two stories below uh, Tiger. I mean, Tiger knows how to take down some fucking biscuits. Tiger right? hits some tuggies, dude. I Tiger hits tuggies, no doubt. You uh, you got your girl now. Do you still hit tuggies? I mean, have you? Can you or no? Are you <laughs> no, still with your girl? I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. No tuggies though. No, I haven't been to tuggy in a long time. <sighs> I just get random urges. Like, there's so many around here. It's crazy. The ones that jerk uh, you off at the end? No. Oh. We got like an hour to kill after before the flight, right? Do you go yeah. shred a tuggy, Gabe? Yeah. Uh, you get tuggies? Oh, uh, you're probably just limp. Like this doesn't work. <laughs> Steve tried to thank you. That's funny, but no, good old tuggy never hurt. Yeah, they still exist. Like they're everywhere. There's a lot of like happy ending places. Yeah. Oh, dude, you're like the OG tuggy. I used guy. to no, think I'll it tell was you what. I'll be honest myth. with you. I've no. definitely gotten happy endings before, too. but I'm not like. Nah, it's not my yeah. thing. Like you know, it's like a it's once in a while like, thing. Yeah, it's a once in a while thing. Sometimes it's a twice or three times a week thing for me. It just depends what how I'm feeling. Depends what day it is. Yeah, you can go on like a you can go on like a tuggy bender. Well, my there first tuggy, I was like, oh god, dude, I'm gonna fuck. I'm a, I'm obsessed. Went like two or three times that week, and then I was like, okay, I'm good. And I think <laughs> I was like go- good for a month or so. Yeah. Then it's just like if you need a little. It's stress. dangerous when there's one right bo- like beside you. Like an OC, there's not one. So oh, I haven't good. been in like months. But in our old house in LA, it's literally like a five minute fucking drive. That's so like if you struck out the night before, you wake yeah. up, you're hung as fuck. You're oh. like, fuck. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna go get a tuggy uh, and grab some starbs. Yeah, dude. No, they can just get. You know what the thing is? Is like sometimes you just need a bust a nut to get some clarity. Yeah, you're good. Thousand percent. You know. Then you can start thinking about business and start thinking about shit you got to do for the day. But if you wake up and you just, I mean, you can do it yourself. But why yeah. would you do that? You sometimes like, you can just eliminate the massage too. You just go right in for the tuggy. Oh yeah. Do you? We've got a couple extra I, I, hundred I, laying I, around. I like to enjoy the massage. See, though. the thing is, I do too. I, I enjoy the massage. I know the build Kim, up. It's like the build up. I mean, the, like best, rub, yeah. Yeah. the best the tug the is when up. you get like it's the massage and then you get a good tug. You know, Dude, that's how yeah, you but make sometimes it you're like pressed the time and like you know you're like Tim likes to just get in and get the tuggy. No, Tim's more of a guy that straight to action. Tim asks the girl if he can massage them. Tim gives them a massage. I think the buildup is the best part. But I've yeah. had one instance where I have walked in, laid down, started doing a thing, and I'm just like, let's be honest. I got to go. Let's <laughs> yeah. fucking wrap this thing up real quick, all right? <laughs> fucking bang me out and I'm out of here. Here's 100 bucks. Yeah. I, I took a couple of my buddies, my Twitch guys, when I flew them down recently to the tug. Oh, dude, it was legendary. It was so fucking funny. They, they were just like, they don't get laid. And they, oh, it was funny, dude. <laughs> The smile on their face walking out. Imagine being that lady, though. I mean, like the guy, the guy just giving hand jobs all day. I know. I think well, it's they're always like Asian ladies, right? Or but like, I respect yeah. it, though. I respect the husband because guess what? Fuck she it. She like they work. They, they love it. They're into they, it. Sh- that they are. 
Yeah. And if they weren't, it would be weird. They yeah. love it. If it was like, oh, I don't want to do this, I'm like, I'm like, oh, whoa, that would be weird. But they've always, <laughs> oh, okay, you're cute. Well, because they're probably used to just getting like old fat guys yeah. too, right? So like when young guys walk in, they're probably like, oh, this is not that no, bad. Like, yeah. This is like a good day on the job. Yeah. Because they probably get some regulars, like the guys that oh, come yeah. every day after work and shit. <laughs> some right? sweaty rags. Oh, God. Oh, uh, fuck. You can still get in trouble for going those things, right? Allegedly. Allegedly. I actually never like, If I, got, if I, I ever got busted, kill. like, get a tuggy. <laughs> I would be the funniest prank on Bob. I wouldn't Dude. Be <laughs> you wouldn't get you me. You should do that to <laughs> someone. Imagine like a catching mug shot. Like, tuggies. <laughs> that would be good, <laughs> That's Dude. a good. Bring some full send guys down, say they won. And then fucking oh that's that's good that's that good, good that's got to be up there for next bid <laughs> fuck because that's you can't funny. actually you can't really like How? follow the real tuggy place though and like personating that's just too much you can't disrupt yeah. their business yeah you gotta respect mean that to them, that's yeah. mean to them like they yeah. run a fucking organization it is probably illegal, right didn't that Patriots guy get fucked the coach yeah yeah Robert Kraft yeah or, or the he, owner yeah they had like thirty names yeah Robert Kraft from he got in tuggies? trouble for getting a tuggy yeah he like got, caught him he was on the list they were monitoring the place for like a while they was it a tuggy or was it a brothel probably a brothel no I mean I think that they were pretty much willing and able to do whatever Robert yeah. Kraft's walking yeah. in with a billion dollars I think yeah. they're gonna do whatever the fuck how, he wants yeah. how's fullsend.com going it's going really good is it going good yeah. I mean that's sweet because you don't have you guys can post whatever the fuck you want there's yeah. no censored shit it's not gonna be like damn that's sweet especially with the content you guys post but that's nice because YouTube's cool cocksucker is, sometimes we're kind of do, we're doing a lot of the giveaways too that's nice so that's, that's cool so we, that. choose some, we brought two fans to Cancun with us fuck dude I and bet like, they're just everyone like, we brought out has been really cool well, that one Which kid was sick. fucking hammered, I think, wasn't he? There was, that was the Howlerhead winner. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. God. Dude, that kid was like... At the fights? Yeah. He was just... Great Too kid. Much, really right? nice oh, kid, meant well, but just pretty fucked up early. Fuck. Yeah. I was just like watching it. The main card hadn't even started, and this kid was just on another planet. I know. Well, I, that was a Howlerhead. Uh, Howlerhead guy? Life. We'll send enough to do See, with that. See, Dane is a great guy. He lets people <laughs> just get fucked up. The winners. Damn. You know? It's hard when you're at the fights to not get too fucked up before the main event. So you gotta. Because if you drink at the fights, you drink, take another one, there's it another fight. It do take a long time oh. for the main event to come. Yeah, you gotta like get there at the main time. card. But you also, get... the buildup is fun too. Like, I mean, how. Uh, yeah, yeah often, it is. It is. Yeah. I never take it for granted. I'm always like, shit, this is like. It definitely builds. This up. is the coolest thing in the world. We're it is back dope. With Dana. Like just right you never know who's it's, fucking there. It's the sickest thing to be able to go sit front row. Yes. One thousand yes. percent. Like it's sure. the biggest blessing ever. It's, it's so also sick, the yeah. sickest event to fucking go to out ever. of any sport all time. <laughs> like let's be it's honest. gladiator shit. You know, it doesn't have to be like a cream of the crop. Like you go anywhere, you buy a ticket anywhere to the UFC. Yeah, you're gonna have fucking maybe the best time you ever had in your life. It's great. It's crazy when you know someone, and you, even if you don't aren't best friends with them, but you know someone that's fighting. The anxiety you can get. You're like, oh, like you get fucked. My little brother was about to probably puke ish. Like you're on the verge of fucking just like an anxiety attack when I'm walking out. And I can't imagine because I've watched, you know, partners fight, um, training partners fight, and it's crazy. But like watching someone you love is like, oh my God, but that's fucking crazy. Just hoping nothing, nothing. Yeah. Cause then, I mean, the fuck, so. you get knocked out. Fighting, you're in there. Obviously, there's a ref. So you're, you, you, the chance you dying aren't very high, but. There's a possibility you get fucking KO'd and don't mm -hmm. wake up. Like there, that's fine. It happens. Has it ever happened? Not in UFC, I don't think. But I mean, like, just happened in bare knuckle boxing not long ago. That you don't bare hear knuckles, about it too whoa. much. Fuck that, dude. My like, my hands already swollen as fuck from the, just like having an actual glove and shit on. Remember when they used to say like UFC was like more dangerous than boxing and shit when that whole shit oh, was going well, on? Oh, boxing, you're getting they were really trying to cancel fucked. MMA, right? Yeah, well, I think with boxing you get dropped and the refs like, all right, you got eight seconds to be able to fucking be good. Like <laughs> yeah. in UFC, you get dropped, the ref you're calls out, it. Like done. imagine that kid that I dropped and the refs like, all right, you get eight seconds. I know. And then I gets go up, fucking do that of a again. kid. It's like that's some serious fucking brain damage. And yeah, I'd say just trying to kill. Yeah, the with guy. UFC, yeah. you're out because the gloves are small. You get knocked out once and then TKO. Yeah, then it's pretty much over. Get knocked down again. You get hit in the head nonstop for fucking twelve rounds every fucking second. Yeah. UFC, the, you got smaller gloves, right? Yeah, you get, four you get smaller ounces, gloves. Right? I think they're about, yeah, four ounces. Like uh, boxing, depending on weight class, like eight, 10, 12 ounces. Mm -hmm. uh, but also you can get fucking shinned to the dome too. Yeah. Has, you, has to your jaw ever been tested yet? Have you, have you I've, been, I've been, I've not really too hard in a fight, but I've been rock sparring. I've been, I've been hit pretty hard, but you don't want to take too many of those. The shots that you're going to eat hard, you want to take them. If you have to, right. like I'm trying, I'm not right. trying to fucking test my chin in the in the gym. Right. I believe I'm in good enough shape, which is a big part of when you get hit, like re recovering and being okay. You know, I, I trust that I have I haven't had enough had much brain damage that I can eat a good shot when I need to. But for the most part, I'm not. You know, the way I look at sparring is a lot different than a lot of fighters, and and that's changed over the last two or three years. 
You know, people will have $50,000 fight of the nights in the gym leading up to a fight. It's not smart. You do not want to be taking brain damage. You do not want to be having headaches after sparring. Yeah. It's just, it's just be brutal. It, and I've had that. I've been there. I've trained. Like, I've had over 30 fights. I've been training for 10 years. I've had those gym wars to where you just, like, that's how you thought you're supposed to train. Over the years, I've been like, okay, that's So how do you stupid. do it now? Like, do you train, like, do you spar at I, I 70% have, or, like, do you uh, tell the sparring partner? Yeah, yeah. For the, for the most part, you know, you have a relationship with your sparring partner. It's like, hey, I'm not trying to knock you out. There's guys when you go and spar who are trying to knock you out and and you can get good work that way you get realistic fucking work that way but it's just like the risk reward it's not, not the same it's not healthy. It's bad over long time. so yeah i pick you know good smart sparring partners that are that i trust with that being said i've knocked people out since sparring not intentionally i just mm-hmm. the right shot he throws i throw at the same time it lands perfect you know you drop people you and it happens and if, you know i've had legit like i've teared up they're dropping something I'm like fuck dude because i know what that means to You're their like career i'm like god huh? damn it i don't want to hurt my sparring yeah. partners we're right. helping each other so but yeah sparring there's there's so much that goes into training camp and you know having good sparring partners is like a big big aspect of it important shit yeah. what are you guys up to today like after today you guys are gonna fly back to uh where fly back to oc we just came off that yeah, like- what was it three-week trip how so was that? We're pretty gassed, dude. I'm sure it was fun fuck. as fuck though. And we got we got like f- five to six videos. Did in you two get a weeks. good amount? Damn, that's that was fun too. It's like traveling, making memories. So now you like, guys are gonna go back back and just kick it, chill for a little bit. Or are you gonna get back right on the making videos? Or are you just gonna have to wait well, for the now editing team? Well, now we got team? five to six in the bank. So, so now it's six because we got a little bit. more time to to edit them and perfect them. So look, the yeah. editors are already on it. So They're what's your main like? So like you wake up tomorrow, are you helping with edits? Like does like ideas? Or are you yeah, just letting tomorrow the team I'll probably kinda... be in the office and stuff, and then I'll go. Ch- they so we have like six editors, so they'll start chopping it. Like Jason and a few of the other guys, they'll Fuck chop yeah. it up, and then Austin will come in and he'll like put it all together. We got and stuff some good shit on nice. that trip, though. We got great shit on the trip. Some good pranks and shit, or or more. Just... We got some pranks too. Yeah. yeah, one of the ones we did was shitting in the pool. So yeah, we got that like was a funny. fake turd oh, on a, at like a resort. And we did it in front of. It's pretty funny. I don't know how you watched I do, it. I no, I just remember. Oh yeah. I don't yeah. know how you guys are so good at those pranks. I don't know, like the the one where the fake girlfriend one, dude. That was that good. One we should, we're gonna run that back. Howling. Yeah, that, that, we, I we enjoyed should run doing that. that, one. that one. Was the, that was it was really the fake funny. girlfriend one. So we we put out an ad that, and we said dude, this was we want to prank we want to prank like someone's parents. Yeah. So if you want us to prank your parents, like Salim and me, we'll pretend to be your boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And then we basically like pretended to be thugs. Well, and you were like, just going off about liberals, and, and then yeah, I, I had some like hardcore Trump people. So right when they walked in the door, I, I asked them if they had Vax cards. <laughs> that was funny. I'm like, so, that was and they got so pissed. Gold. Yeah, I told you at the at the after party. Tim and I, we went all the way back to the full um the Nelk Nelk YouTube like eight years ago. We were watching like the old old shit. I know the old. That's shit's so great. good though. But like, it's just funny. The like there were short videos. And they were like, it's funny to see where the idea started and now where it's at. It was, it was fucking cool yeah, to idea. see. When you got a great idea, it's, a, it's exciting. you want to do it right Woo! away. Yeah, it's a great I heard feeling. You, you're very impulsive that way. What? Like, you have an idea, like, let's fly here. Let's go film it. Like, yeah, like, yeah, we're on the, not giving trying a to fuck book flights and shit. Yeah. yeah, this shit is crazy. This this whole thing, too. Like, even coming here, yeah. It's a different fucking city. It's, it's great, absolutely though. absolutely nuts. It's great. Yeah, you guys fucking grind the pods. It's fucking cool to see. It's a the full time awesome. job, dude. Yeah, huh? it literally is like, full time, insane. but it's very enjoyable. Full time, full yeah. sign, always. Fucking Gabe doing his work. Him and Steiny's beef, love that. Yeah, bro, Steiny's fucking funny. Yeah. He is the funniest guy. And I can do like he's funny as fuck. He's really good. At it. He's I funny can... too. Yeah, on the pod. <laughs> I remember uh, at the at the after party, Steve said he'll give me hundred k. Like fuck his sister. You said you'd throw a hundred bid in on it. I would really, really debate it on it. <laughs> Yo. I was like, oh, damn. Fuck Steiny's sister? You ever tried to you ever no, met her? No, I never did. I just had a normal relationship with her. She was cool. Uh, she and was I, cool. Rachel, I'm high. I'm sorry. Yo, Rachel was, Rachel's cool shit. But I was Steiny, debating. He's the cockiest little fucker, though, on the planet. Like, you know, he, it's the best. He, I uh, love it. I know Steiny's good, good finesse. Like, but if you take his chain off, I guarantee a fucking 16 year old Steiny comes back and he's just like. <laughs> I first met Steiny when I brought, I hired him, right? When I met him at Gold Oh, Cole. shit. That's right. That's I right, met that's him at right. fucking Gold Cafe. Yeah. He was a little fucking shit. That's little not funny. cocky at all, shit in his pants, pissing his pants, walking up, being like, "How you doing? Um, uh, I'd really like an opportunity <laughs> here. I, I, I really like an opportunity uh, here." And I'm like, "Oh uh, yeah." And he like told me all this shit about his dad. He dropped his dad a lot, being one of the best defense attorneys in the country, and all that. And he, then he's like, "I ran a poker game." I'm like, "Yeah, you're hired. All right." 
So he just stuck with Dude. me. His first job was to get me an Adderall at 1230 at night. Damn. And he completed <laughs> it. And fucking with, ever since then, now he's fucking Eminem. Yeah, Down no there shit. With you guys with chains Steiny. on and fucking hanging with uh, whoever the fuck it is. Bro, that's funny. Yeah, Steiny's, Steiny's good. Yeah, Steiny's, like Steiny's a, is, is a cool guy. It's sweet seeing all you guys at the fights. I know you, you were at the fight. Were you? Yeah, I, I had to golf. <laughs> no, I respect <laughs> that. Up, yeah. Fucking 730 at night. Fucking hitting the yeah, that's, that's when you know you're upset. He went snowboarding, like, you turned down UFC shit, bro. I went, no, I went snowboarding golf. the next day. Ah. But... It, yeah, I know. You I'm sorry. You should have came. I, I, okay. I want to come to. I want to come yeah, to another. You're, you're gonna apologize to me. You missed. You missed it. I wish you I missed could. it. I, I just there. need to see my clubs, man. Honestly, no, I, 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 feel, I have. I have that. You know, that's a good obsession to have. You, you, you got positive. a show too, right? You have a podcast. Yeah, the Timbo Sugar Show. I don't know where where, where Tim Tim went. We we've been doing that Tim for a couple the years. Yeah, Tim had. Well, I was. I saw Tim at the fucking coffee shop. I'm like, what are you doing here? He's like, God, I was about to hit a tuggy, but then I was like, let's just go get a burrito. <laughs> so he's there. But yeah, then me and my brother have a the Bro Mally show. So we do two shows, one a week on on both of them. Just Dope fucking name, sit Bro down, Mally. Bro Mally show. Yeah, just sit down, bullshit about. You know, I mean, my audience is mostly about fights. We talk a lot about fights, um, fucking tuggies and here and there. Did you ever do like a vlog? I, I drop vlogs every once in a while. Mine are for my, the ones that do good for me are just like when I'm at home with Danny and Elena and I'm fucking I feel like that could do that would be sick. Yeah, they're pretty they they were did pretty good like they're fun to make. They're not they're not hard. They're not nothing crazy. They're not uh you know, she's not there's not that a lot that goes into them. It's m- mostly just the recording and fucking putting it together, but I just can't imagine having a camera in your face 24-7. That would drive me fucking nuts. Like, yeah. You guys always are shooting, shooting, shooting. I just can't. Is that well, something you're that you... are fucking filming all the time on your Yeah, phone. but I'm quick. I'm just like, I'm zapped. Boom. And then I'm just I, think it's dope I'm to, I think it's dope to have a vlog when you're not really, like, <laughs> focusing on, like, trying to yeah. get stuff. Like, it's just like, yo, this is me. Like, we're yep. doing this, this, that. Yep, exactly. Whatever comes out of it. Exactly. I can't even, like, go to the bathroom. I go, like, take a piss. I walk out. It's like, fucking, there's a camera right here. We're like, how's your day? I'm like, how's your piss? You know? It's so is well. that something you think that, because these guys love it. It's part of their business and whatnot. Is that something you could ever, you would want ever? Full-time <laughs> yeah, I, blog and it's, everything? It, for me, it's like, I record what I want to. Like, and I, I don't have, like, with the podcast, an hour, his is an hour. So that's two hours a week. There's a camera in front of me. And then sometimes I'll fucking do a vlog. So it's, the camera's not really on me too much unless it's, like, getting close to a fight then espn will come out ufc will come out monster will come out and then it's like a, quite a bit of recording but it's during in those moments it's like for me it's business it's, i'm working so it's i enjoy when the camera is on me i enjoy it also i stream like two or three hours every day and like the camera's on me there and uh so i i, I like when the camera's on i mean it's you know what do you, what do you stream right now COD? I've been playing so much Call of Duty lately. Is the I, new COD good? I, I played my fucking thumb from the fights still swollen. So I tried playing yesterday and it was just it hurt too bad. I played like two games. The new map's kind of dog shit. Um been playing a lot of Madden actually. Probably the last two months I've been playing a lot of Madden. You guys fuck with Madden much? Yeah, I used, I used to, to I, I used to shred COD. I played Madden. I feel like Madden the last one I time. played was MW three. Oh shit. Yeah. I don't know if you ever yeah. played two K. So you guys don't you guys don't game at all, any of you guys anymore? I used to like ri- like you don't I have time days to on MW2 yeah, yeah. and shit. Days. I, I but... remember looking at the how many hours you'd have played. It'd be like fucking 32 days. All like, I wanted shit. to do was just drop nukes. I didn't drop care about nukes. anything else but dropping fucking nukes. Was never... tube, noob tube, one man army or no? You know, I was a big tack knife so guy. A oh, tack knife guy. Marathon lightweight commando oh, with the tack insertion through. too. Just put the it in the spawn <laughs> and then just boom, boom, boom. Do the tack insertion. Get the harrier, fuck off. Oh, yeah. Get the chopper gun. Never Call of Duty. Nuke, done. Really? Never played Call of Duty. Never played Call of Duty, no. Damn, I've never heard someone say that. I just I used to play basketball, basketball all the time, so I just play two K all day. Dude, balls fucking fun. Basketball is amazing. Ball, I miss I miss actually balling. Like I would love to have like a like a like one of those leagues at a gym. Steiny thinks he's fucking great dude, at ball. Dude, I have, dude, I everyone I've ever time. met some thinks they're good at basketball. It's like I'm fucking ass at ball. Yeah. Oh, basketball is amazing, man. Basketball's fun. Football. You guys up. watch football much? Like, a little bit. I guess Canada, you don't really watch the NFL, right? Growing no, up. No, a lot of people do. I didn't really too much watch yeah. like mostly hockey, but Yeah. Oh hockey, yeah. I never really got into hockey. You watch football? Football football is the best there is though. Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just golf all day. Just fucking golf. I don't really yeah. So do you uh man, golf is just like a hard one for me to watch. Probably because I'm not I've never done it. It's like COD. It's like watching COD if you don't play COD. Right. Yeah, yeah like yeah, if you play golf then you're just like more I don't what know, I what do you love, love so much about it that it just brings you to the moment and it's something to get better well, at, like or do you just can't right? put it? Your therapeutic, on it? and it's I like how technical it is. Like you, you can never be perfect at the game, so it's like trying to achieve perfection. But obviously, you know, I know I'm never going to be perfect, like right. you know, but just trying to get better. 
Like, because I mean, the best players always could get better, right? Always. The best players could. Yeah, I love your determination. Also- I'm saying, what's your handicap now, though? I don't. I don't even deal. I don't even know what the hell that is. But okay. All yeah, right, so you're still in the beginning stages. Right, we got to play soon. If you're getting that good, you're playing a lot of golf. Well, no, Kyle wasn't playing good that day. I mean, if he was I playing, just yeah, if he was playing, but that's good. part of golf oh, is good. playing but good. But still that to day. beat him is pretty impressive. I mean, I was, I was hitting seen me like I must have shot like 115. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was, I was hitting green like. But like Selim if it's was a par good. four, I was hitting green I've like you. I think you have some bad days. If you played yeah. like that, he might be able to beat I you. Mean, but on that bad, I just check out. Like I'll come back in. If you golf seven days a week, how many good days are you gonna have? You think? Like good, good days. Like you're, how, do you have more bad days than good days? Yeah, for sure. Oh, do you ever think that? Do you, like when you wake up in the morning? Do you have, do you have like a routine? Like okay, I'm gonna fucking have a solid day today on the field or on the on the course. Yeah, usually when I wake up really early. And wake up early. Like, do you, what do you do? You do a certain anything like a, a little meditation? Get your mind nah, right? I just go to the go to the range. Literally with no one there. And you guys do anything just, meditation? No, I've tried. I just really. can't do it. Do you do it? Dude, I've been doing it for years. Really? Every single morning, and it's probably the most powerful thing I've ever started. That and ice baths. So what does that consist of, like, meditating? Dude, there's so many different ways you can meditate. There's apps. I mean, you could literally type in, and I do this a lot, 10-minute meditation on YouTube, and it's just quieting your mind and starting for – planning for a good day so what it, like what do you do like do you like close your eyes and like take deep breaths I go or, like, it, it, you there's guided meditations where they're where it's like okay br- nasal breathe into your belly and it's there's mantras there's so many different things i like to go outside 10 minutes is all it takes but it's it's a powerful 10 minutes if you can fucking get your mind in control and and so you start your day like that i start my day like that you before i do up, anything just, wake up i want to try it minutes. and it's some it the thing is you could try it one time I don't feel anything two times. I don't feel anything. It's a it's a consistency that you have to do over time, and it's the number one thing that I've I've I'm I'm happy that I've did in my life is being consistent with the meditation. You literally do it every day. Every day, journal journaling something I really like to do. I'm not a writer. I'm not a fucking I don't like writing, but I, journaling my thoughts. I I do that either in the morning or at night. One of the two. It's pretty cool because now I have like three or four full journals. That, back from like 2017 before I was in the UFC like reading them back on like whatever day today is in 2017 like seeing what I was doing I write down what I'm gonna do for the day and shit like that it's pretty cool but I also find that like therapeutic and stuff but therapy like when you love something it's just like that's my meditation I feel like yeah I, I feel like for me too doing jujitsu and stuff like that's a meditation for me but I also think what separates the good from the great is the mind and I feel 100%. like I, I mean, and, and to be able to control your mind and have thoughts that you want to have, I can't afford a bad day at the, at the, at the in the cage. I, I have to show up. I have to show up. Obviously, Saturday I night. have the confidence. Like every day before I play, I'm like, I'm gonna play my best round. Yeah. But a lot I mean, more because yeah. I just started. Like I gotta like really. Yeah, I gotta know everything. About I would just the game. suggest looking up doing a ten minute meditation. There's, I mean, you could look up the different meditations. There's meditation where you're completely quieting your mind and literally just following your breath. You're not listening to a guided meditation or a mantra or anything. And then there's mo- meditation where there's mantras and you're there's there's a couple different ones that you could maybe find that you like more than the others. But if you just do it ten minutes, even if you say okay, I'm just gonna do it for five days and just start there, uh, I guarantee you, if you stay with it, it will benefit your life tremendously. Hundred percent. I'm gonna start tomorrow. You need to meditate. I know. We well, all do. I need to fucking meditate. It helps with sleep. No, helps I'm with gonna anxiety. fucking start meditating tomorrow. Your the problem mind, is yeah. when you when you close your eyes and you're doing those deep breaths and you're clearing your mind. You're what happens? It's like zaps, shit just pops zaps. in. Like shit just. That's pops good. In. That's what meditation is. If it's popping in and you're observing it, and then you let it go, and then it doesn't go away. You're like, fuck, it's not going away. And then your ten minutes is up, and you're like, oh, that wasn't that good, but it was good. If you were sat there and observed those thoughts, and you and just doing the ten minutes, even if you suck. Even if all 10 minutes is you thinking, it's like that's a good fucking start. You're not going to sit there and be good at it. I've been doing it for years, and I'm not going to go sit there in 10 minutes clear my mind 100%. Not like, but are you thinking about negative things or positive things? You think well, it depends what meditation you're doing. If you're doing like a mantra one, like – What's a mantra? A mantra is like, for me, this whole fight camp, like kind of something I would like to say in my head to get me out of my thoughts is like too sharp, too fast, too focused, too sharp, too fast, too focused. I'm not thinking about, fuck, what happens if he kicks me or what happens if he takes me down? I'm thinking too sharp, too fast, too focused. That's what's going through my fucking mind. Walking out, that's all I was saying. Too sharp, too fast, too focused. When I was in the cage, there's probably you probably see my lip. I'm like too sharp, too fast, too focused. That's a mantra that's not letting me 
lose control of my thoughts. I'm not thinking, oh my God, what the fuck? Look at how many people are, like I'm thinking too sharp, too fast, too focused. I'm dialed the fuck in. And it's like, that's a mantra. Like for a morning mantra, you know, you, I, you probably would be saying that. I'd be like, I'm gonna have a fucking good day today. Little things like that. But uh, yeah, you guys should definitely just at least try it. I might use I'm those down. exact same words. What were they again? Too sharp, too fast, too focused, baby. Right, that's all I'm waking up tomorrow. <laughs> that's fucking sorry, up tomorrow. Just fucking shadow boxing in the that's, first that's, thing that's in the morning. That's a good little slogan. You guys ever getting cold plunge? Yeah, Fuck I can't. Do, I can only do it for like ten seconds. Well, cold plunge. What is that? Oh, cold, I have a cold, cold bath. Cold, what do you, what do you yeah. think I can do a cold bath. I can do a cold. Fuck bath. A cold plunge. Like you go to cold water. You plunge. Yeah. In I think the you just gotta. For I me, a, if I I did it once and I just like just I was like shut my eyes and just like deal with it. Cold plunges are tough. I have a nice ass one at my house. Every in fight camp, three minutes. It was forty degrees, three minutes every night, and 40, it's oh, it's that's a cool. you feel so good after though, right? You feel incredible after a cold you plunge. See the one and you just Rogan get right in the hot tub. Yeah, twenty two. No, I do the hot tub and then I do cold plunge. The Rogan doing twenty minutes is fucking. Borderline insane. Actually, it's probably on the other side of insane. That's I don't. He did it for twenty. <laughs> dude, it was insane. Like, you watched that, that video. Was just, that I was just, yeah, he was. Oh, I seen that video I don't, on Instagram. Dude, like twenty minutes. I'm pretty mentally fucking sharp and fucking pretty mentally strong. Twenty minutes would be fucking like I would have to yeah, be paid tough. prior to do that. Right. Like I wouldn't do that on my own will. Right, 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 right. right. Like three minutes. Fuck that. Three minutes is good, but. Yeah, boys. I think we're good, right? Fucking, what do you guys think? I think we covered great. it all. I love yeah. it. I'd love to do some pranks with you one day. Let's I, just, do it. I would be yeah, so I was going to say, if, you guys, him on a prank. if you guys want to see us do a prank with uh, Sean, let's fucking let's think of something. Let's have him comment do the your girlfriend ideas and drop a like. Hilarious. Do what? Do the girlfriend one. Oh my god, dude! I would be. <laughs> you think so... you could pull that off? I feel like you could. Dude, I actually, I think so too. I would have to be. Oh my god! You should I'd be do like so you fucking call. No, no, no! But like, if we do the drug thing again. Like he can also be one of the guys that pulls up. He should do a like, black family. I could come family. knock on the door and he or he could a be black the, family. Oh fuck, man! I will get my ass just beat down. No, no, fuck. I just think it'd be hilarious. No, you, you just, just come to random dudes. You just dudes. knock out the dad. <laughs> make him shit dude, in his dude, own dude, house. I, I'd like that. Just like, oh my god, dude! I would be so. I would have a fucking heart attack. I would try. I'd fucking attempt it. Let's do it. Let us know if you guys want to see that. Yeah, yeah I would love to you, see. You that. should have him like go up to different dudes and be like, "You fucked my like. You really fucked a girl." Like it was his girl or something like that. Like God, I'm not good at confrontation like that. I would struggle, but I would attempt it. Maybe the comments will have like good ideas, something something they could see. I say we get you to meet the parents or meet the parents too. That's a great one. Yeah, we should at least family. get a baddie and let me smash. And then yeah, I'd be like, fuck okay, it. it'd be worth it. Bring a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Bring all right, boys. Biscuit. We'll uh, see you guys next Wednesday. Love it. All good. Let's go. Great pod. Let's go. This is, this is dope. Tell me all the fucks I ever gave on my head. Lately, I've been living like I can't take a loss.